Uh, one of the things that uh, we keep confronting are non-tariff barriers to American manufactured products. And uh, one of the, we had last year the uh, Cash for Clunkers program to encourage and, and help sustain um, uh, the uh, production and sale of, of uh, cars here. And uh, one of the a story was circulating around Capitol Hill that whereas uh, we did not require the cars that were being subsidized to be built in America because of international treaty obligations, uh, that China had turned around and done something very similar but had restricted it to cars made in China. Now, I'm not sure if that story was exactly correct or not, but it's an example of the type of stories we hear often of, of barriers to American products abroad and how, how much uh, uh, truth is there to uh, non-tariff barriers and why is it we seem to have such a hard time playing hardball to get uh, a, a fair level playing field for American products? To uh, either or both of you. Uh, first, I'd like to say that the Obama administration is committed to enforcing our trade laws, and we're working very hard to do so. Um, I think that it's certainly uh, we believe that American products are very competitive and can beat uh, other products from other countries if, if they're given a fair chance, and we work very hard through our import administration and in cooperation with USTR to enforce our trade laws to ensure the level playing field that you describe. So do you think we're, we're there or are there in fact significant challenges? And uh, I must say often the reaction uh, among some is a hesitancy to hold other nations accountable for their non-tariff barriers for fear of triggering a, a trade war uh, and the uh, short-term uh, you know, problems that that might, might create. But how do you go about holding countries accountable that are, are, are creating uh, barriers to favor their own companies uh, to the disadvantage of the United States? I think that you maintain vigilance in, in pursuing uh, the, the enforcement of trade laws, and that's what the Obama administration is committed to do. Uh, we, we continue to do it. I mean, much of what we do uh, is the subject of pending cases that we can't speak to specifically, but certainly uh, vigilance is what is important, and we are committed because we understand what that does to, uh, you know, the, the lack of that will do to our uh, manufacturing base in this country, and we're committed to making sure that it's strong and that American products can compete uh, on, a, on a level playing field. Anything you'd like to add, Mr. Kummer? Uh, not really. That would not be the area that I would be that All right. familiar with. Uh, Andy Grove wrote a, a recent article about the loss of manufacturing in the United States. And uh, one thing that he observed is that while there are firms such as Intel that have established sizable manufacturing operations, and we're fortunate to, to have a couple of those in, in Oregon, that there are a lot of uh, firms, younger firms, that are designing products, but they immediately, as soon as the designs are done, set up production facilities offshore. And that that compromises the ability to scale up here in the United States and, and create significant, substantial manufacturing jobs here. Um, is, is this a, 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 an issue that we're focused on, and uh, how does it uh, affect both the production of manufacturing jobs and uh, the, uh, how does it affect our national security, and how do we change that dynamic? I would agree that there needs to be a strong connection between uh, the basic research, the design and development aspects of, in the actual production. Uh, I, I do know that that certainly is, is a challenge I think the things that, that we are starting to see is uh, when you look at the total manufacturing enterprise, not just the labor costs, but you're seeing a tendency to, to reevaluate that and to bring some of that effort back to the U.S. Uh, to tie uh, the actual manufacturing process uh, more closely to the customer base that, it, that it's serving. Uh, there's a ways to go on that, but I, d I do see a, a change in thinking uh, where it really is critical to, to look at the entire enterprise from beginning to end uh, and all of the components of cost, not, not just the labor element, uh, but certainly the logistics, et cetera, that go along with that. 
And Senator, I'd just like to add that, um, and this is partly in response to Senator Warner's comments about making sure that America is competitive for site selection and, and, and such. Um, the Secretary is working very hard on an initiative that we hope to stand up very shortly that will help in that regard because we do know that uh, our state is in so that our siting uh, manufacturing in the United States is more competitive. So we look forward to working with you on that because I think that's critical to what uh, uh, Mr. Grove spoke about as well, is just making sure that the whole package is competitive so that uh, companies can locate here and, and that we can create the jobs that we need to do to sustain our growth in the 21st century. 